We're so back. We're so back. A nine is crazy. <laughs> That's too high. It's too high. Put make it lower. All right, look. I know this is just some guy with an opinion, right? It doesn't matter, whatever, whatever, whatever. But we have a long standing lore here. There's such a long lore. I did a reaction like three years ago to his review of For Me To You, which he gave a five. And I was I was super excited about the five. A strong five, I'll take it. I probably had a bit of a smiley face over the, the raging person syndrome. But nonetheless, bro, this guy hated my shit. Like he was on live stream cringing to my songs, playing the, you know, the wah, wah, wah sound effect every time the beat dropped. <laughs> like, shit was not, shit was not good, you know? But yeah, I got the score spoiled. I couldn't go five seconds after it was uploaded without, you know, bro, bro. I haven't watched the video. I wanted to react to the review because I feel like it's such a full circle moment. And, you know, I could talk about the, the music and, you know, just... Just have some fun with it. I know like a lot of people want me to make YouTube videos. And then there's about an equal amount that are like, well, technically, uh, if Quareka has not released a direct to camera YouTube video in two years, then he cannot be considered a YouTube rapper. However, once the seal is broken, I don't know. I, I don't know where I was going with that. Does the act of this video make me a YouTube rapper again? Probably. All that hard work down the drain yet again. We're up. We're so up as a, as like a the Quadeca community, like the long term fans. This is it's like the equivalent of buying Bitcoin in 2010. You know what I'm saying? We're here. We're locked in now. We're locked in. But yeah, I see this. Look, look right in front of us. We got the yellow flannel. We join the yellow flannel club. It's an elite esteemed club. You know, you got me. You got sexy red. Let's. Let's end it there. And before you start watching the shit, I do just have to address the first thing on my mind, which is the, I feel like the last album's better, <laughs> you know? It's like, Haunt You is better than Scrapyard. Like, I think it's like, like Haunt You is like a whole point better. But I, I still think Scrapyard's really good. Like I put it out because I think it's really good. Um, and I do think it's more fun to listen to. Like if I got in my car right now and I had to listen to any of my albums on shuffle, I would, very much click scrapyard. I'll stop talking. Let's watch this thing and I'm I'm just genuinely curious to hear what he has to say about the album and why he why he liked it so much. Or I guess it's a mixtape, you know, but whatever, it's all the same shit. The yellow flannel again because you like the music. Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Quadeco record, Scrapyard. And this is a new record from producer, rapper, songwriter, singer, Quadeca. A guy who has made one of the most radical and surprising artistic transitions of any artist operating in the internet age over the past 10 years. And I'm sorry, I feel like I'm not adding anything to this video because I'm just like, I, I, I forgot that the camera was there. I'm just like very much immersed. He would actually go on to blow listeners away even further with the following I didn't mean to haunt you in 2022. With this thing, it was really getting difficult to categorize Quideca as uh, just a rapper, much less a YouTube rapper, as he's really now just generally a musical artist through and through who uh, seemingly can do and try to do whatever he puts his mind to. And the level of That's versatility Quideca has reached in a handful of short years uh, is honestly... <laughs> kind of insane needs to be studied as the kids would say <laughs> that's very sweet thank you and i think that's definitely something that i like doing like as an artist but also i think it's kind of fun that you know the people that are my listeners and shit you can really you, you really don't know what to expect any song could sound like anything it's like a real i don't know what's something that's a surprise uh, a kinder egg mystery box is that a thing? Which is especially true of this new record of his here, Scrapyard, with the tracks being framed as a mix of older and new stuff, material that may not have fit on his highly conceptual 2022 record, but also wouldn't see any home on a future project either. Maybe the production was too rough, maybe the song overall was a bit unfinished or explored an idea sonically that uh, he just, just wanted to touch down on for a single track, I don't know. Regardless. Yeah, that. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's stuff that I made during the Haunt You era that just didn't fit on the album, and also stuff between 
Haunt You and the next album that I'm doing that I f that doesn't fit that. But it's not like I don't respect these songs. I actually kind of feel like there's an argument to be made that they kind of force their way through. When I'm making these albums, like I'm just at the studio every day and I'm like, this is what I'm doing, da 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 da. So every time I'm, I'm kind of going outside of that, it's, it's kind of like a procrastination in a way, or also just an exercise of trying shit out, doing something that I really want to make or that I feel like, like needs to be made as just a singular thing. So it's funny because yeah, there was really no vision that any of these songs would ever be really released or in a project altogether. And I think that kind of helped the process of it because I wasn't thinking about this big contextual thing, but just rather by like, oh, each song by song by song. I think both methods of going about making something have been really fulfilling, but that's, that's what this one is, you know? he just just wanted to touch down on for a single track i don't know regardless though uh, listening to these tracks individually uh, especially they do stand on their own artistic merits and certainly seemed worth putting out as singles or as uh, little eps last year and now with scrapyard here all of these tracks are being assembled uh, and more being added to them for an overall album slash mixtape type experience and even more so than the i didn't mean to haunt you material i'm finding a lot of these tracks just being difficult to define in terms of their sound, their style, their influences. I mean, for sure, there are lots of touches and splashes of uh, modern internet era hip hop across the board, be that trap, be that boom bap hip hop, auto croon stuff, artists who are both mainstream and underground, more abstract, uh, artists who inhabit more of that mid tier as well, popularity, Brock Hampton, for example. I mean, Kevin Abstract does appear on the last track of this record. So so yeah, no, that's that's real. And thank you. Yeah, I feel like it does kind of, it is kind of hard to pin down. I live life and I meet people and they're like, so, oh, you make music. Oh, what kind of music do you make? And then I'm just like, the Brock Hampton thing is really funny. And I was talking to Kevin Abstract and I was like, it's so funny that you wanted to work with me. And then we put this song at the end of the mixtape because there's like a few songs that are very directly Brockhampton inspired where I was almost afraid. Oh shit, is this too Brockhampton-y? And then, you know, they're being, no, no, it does its own thing. But that's like a thought that went through my head. Like, am I biting too much? So it's so it's just, it's just funny and the cool little poetic moment. I was inspired by something that I had no idea would actually come to fruition on the same piece of work, really. And then there are a lot of moments where Ben very clearly is being heavily influenced by emo-adjacent singers and songwriters such as Connor Oberst. So we have some of those songwriting styles blending, and on top of that, uh, many of these songs are encased in production that is so detail-heavy and lush and layered, but also messy, chaotic, lo-fi. The sounds on this record simultaneously strike me at points as harsh, as ugly, but also grand and mountainous. At times, I'm reminded of the grim and eerie horrors of Dan Barrett's Have a Nice Life, while other tracks bring the warm, blissful fuzz of My Bloody Valentine and Shoegaze music more broadly. And what yeah. balance we're striking. I do feel like there is like a lot of gazy elements, and I kind of feel like gaze as like a, this is gonna sound so stupid, but like gazy shit as a concept can be applied on such a, wider level than just like guitar music you know i feel like there is some unexplored territory with kind of bringing that like blurry beauty into other contexts you know connor obers yeah that ruminations album that's an amazing album it really depends on the track you're listening to here because sure while on the production side much of the time the beats loops repetitions uh, do read as if they're assembled much like any hip-hop song whether or not a given track here reads as a hip-hop song on the surface kind of depends on what ben is offering on top of it vocally and lyrically the songs being yourself and even if i tried for example are a few of my favorites here and stylistically, I find both of these nice. songs uh, kind of impossible to categorize <laughs> between their ritualistic yeah. percussion, ghostly vocals, thumping 808s, glitchy sound effects, distorted bass, shouty rap sung lead vocals, really linear song structures too that are always evolving. Again, not entirely sure what these tracks are, but I love them. Meanwhile- Hell yeah, that's awesome. I, I love that he loves those because those are some of the most inaccessible, but also like my favorites. Like, even if I tried is one of my favorite, like, there was a period 
where in the first three EPs, even if I tried, it was like by far my favorite song. And Being Yourself is one of them that I put up on SoundCloud as an ARG for people who got the, my For Me To You vinyl because the vinyl was taking so long and I just felt bad that the vinyl was taking so long. I was like, damn, I need to give these people <laughs> something. And so I did Being Yourself on SoundCloud kind of as a secret song, but it's always stuck with me as one of my faves and I was like okay it needs it needs to come out because yeah I do feel like it hits what he's saying so that's cool I didn't think he would really fuck with either of those I thought he could but that's awesome that those are standouts and it means that that Tony's a real one that he sees the vision you know sorry but I love him meanwhile there are other cuts on here that read as just being straightforward rap inspired moments be that way too many friends which is some great commentary on friendship on personal connections on letting people in and boundaries it really yeah. is like an indie piano ballad boom bap hybrid that couldn't sound any better than it does especially thanks to Ben's solid rapping then guess who let's go way too many friends I was gonna cut from this mixtape and then Riley from Hivemind came in clutch. He came for everybody that that likes way too many friends. You can thank Riley John Savage from Hivemind.com. He talked me into it, and then I grew to kind of. I was like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Guess who is a pretty experimental hip hop no brainer. But then conversely, under my skin is uh, some very dramatic emo style songwriting in the vein of a Connor Oberst, wrapped in this super haunting atmosphere uh, that kind of seems way more out there than what you would usually catch on one of his LPs. There's also a similar. That's sick. I, I like that he likes all the ones that. Whenever I see track rankings are always at the bottom that that I like. <laughs> so that that means that means that we're twizzed up here, Anthony. We're twizzed up. There's way more out there than what you would usually catch on one of his LPs. There's also a similar influence on the song A la Carte 2 featuring Breakins, but this track goes in more of a uh, bedroom emo pop direction that's uh, super on trend right now, which is something I'm usually a little on the fence with a lot of the time, but I got to be honest, Ben has put together easily one of the best tracks in this vein I've ever heard here, Let's go. especially with all the Let's stellar go. melodic rap runs, nimble bass lines too, like something you would catch out of a Flying Lotus record. <laughs> Generally, the shout out to Sam Arnold. He played the bass on that. God damn. I loved making a la carte a lot of fun to do. And I kind of, when I was making it, I was thinking this is a FIFA song. It's got weird drum samples, like Brazilian, and it's a little emo-y, it's a little rappy. I mean, the subject matter is not FIFA. Like, the subject matter is a very uncomfortable song about sex, you know? So maybe, maybe not for FIFA then. I could change the lyrics. Favorite FIFA game was the one I played with you. You know, EA hit the business email again. This is so cool and so weird to watch this. Like, that's crazy. We made it. We're done. We did music. Let's go back to the diss tracks. Haven't done the Ice Spice impression yet. There's lots of lots of old ground to make up. Generally, the sound play across this mixtape is just <laughs> so many cuts above uh, what I'm normally hearing on any given record I have to review week to week. And yeah. I'm just in awe of how well Ben has been able to create a little sonic world here that feels uh, both harsh, textured, weird. Yeah, again, I've said all this already, but also otherworldly and surreal and uh, refined like uh, an orchestra piece or something. It's this is sick. He's speaking to, he's speaking to my heart because that's what I kind of think in my head. I'm always thinking about creating worlds with the palettes and I did put a lot more focus on getting really good instrumental performances like Pretty Privilege with all the guitar solos and all the piano. Like I, I did all those instruments and I've just been, I've been putting in the hours to try and continue to get better. I'm not that good at guitar. I'm good at making guitar sound good <laughs> on songs going layer by layer to kind of fake that i'm a good guitar player but if hey if it sounds good then fuck it this is sick thank you for saying that and the next album vanisher and shout out to the other musicians that helped on the album autumn did all of the flute miles Martin did the drums at the end of Pretty Privilege. Sam Arnold did the bass on a la carte. And Johan Lennox did the strings with Yasmin, who played the violin on Texas Blue. 
So yeah, those are all those are all the credits. Shout out to them. It's really giving like the that's glow it. part two in that respect, uh, though it's assembled with the precision uh, that only somebody could bring to the table if they're kind of like you know a DAW master. All my Logic Pro X users, bring it in, bring it in here, bring it. Yep, yep. But really, no matter what track I'm listening to here, I'm just constantly in awe of how chaotic it sounds, but simultaneously uh, very carefully interconnected and assembled. And the end That's result sick. is just super evocative. On these tracks, I feel like I'm being dragged through the depths of hell or, you know, even being shot across the galaxy. Like This is crazy. This is awesome. This is crazy. That's crazy. On tracks like You Don't Know Me Like That, which is a, a dramatic, tiny-voiced piano ballad that bursts eventually into this lush banger with punchy beats, touching arrangements. Meanwhile, easier with its super slick guitar passages and woodwind bits that are just smudged and mutated sonically uh, to the point where they just come across as unreal. Yeah, that's a stunning sonic moment, too. Wow. And on top of it, this track, wow. along with... No, this is sick because I feel like, you know, not everybody's always going to get it, but I think Tony really is getting getting the idealized version of what I'm trying to do. It's cool if anybody gets it, but like for him to, to get it and for there to be this whole previous arc is just like, it's sick, it's sick. Come across as unreal. Yeah, that's a stunning sonic moment too. And on top of it, this track, along with many others here, is kind of a lyrical flex where Ben is going in detail around all of this emotional turbulence. It's a strange and twisted portrayal of love and obsession uh, with somebody who he seems to be really into, but maybe he's also settling for, but uh, he can't say no, he can't back away, he's just infatuated, and maybe he's acknowledging that the attraction is there because he doesn't want to be alone, but he's not willing to kind of cut things off and fully separate. Uh, look, it's really complicated. <laughs> and displaying the emotions on this track as such comes across as very intentional. I'm gonna wrap things up with, I guess, a few issues here. I mean, there are some tracks that are Buckle up! I think showcase some great ideas bring some key vibes to the table, but are maybe a little too short and underdeveloped as an entire song at the end of the day. Uh, be that I make it look effortless as well as Guide Dog too. And Guide then Dog, pretty... I feel like if I scrolled to the comments, the fact that he said Guide Dog, because people love that one. Guide Dog being least favorite. Yeah, we knew that was coming. <laughs> that is completely fair. Production wise, it's the most underdeveloped. It's literally just guitar and a short written song it's one of those that in its way is like one of the biggest experiments because it's so naked and it's so vulnerable and so i could definitely see it not not hitting for somebody it's one of them that i'm really proud about making because i think it is one of the biggest raw expressions that i've ever done and and it's got you know a bunch of personal lore that makes the lyrics feel really powerful to me, but that nobody would know. <laughs> so. And then there's Pretty Privilege, which, I mean, there are some sonic ideas that I find interesting, but much of the time the droning sonic fuzz that pervades a lot of this track uh, kind of keeps the song from fully translating, I think. That's all valid. Pretty Privilege is one of the most disjointed ones. At the current moment, at the current moment, Pretty Privilege is my favorite one. Am I just, is this weird? Am I just like dick riding myself? Though I do love those grisly bear-esque vocal harmonies um, on the back end of the track and how they stack up so epically. You can really tell uh, Ben did his indie homework on this one. <laughs> Outside of that, I suppose the overall sonic presentation of this mixtape is a little sloppy. But again, I, I feel like with it being a mixtape of sorts, that's kind of a part of the charm and doesn't really take away from the songs as pretty much all the various pieces of instrumentation and lyrics, vocals are all translating really well. But yeah, there are powerful, emotional, personal and well thought out, well orchestrated and produced bangers from front to end on this thing. And it's kind of crazy how crazy. on this project of Lucy's effectively, I think Ben has continued to evolve and really show how special of an artist he is at the end of the day. That's which so sweet. Is why I'm Thank you. Wow. Oh wait, he's about to say it. He's about to say oh, it. Is why I'm feeling a strong A to a light nine Let's on go. this one. Transition. Go. Given I already had the score spoiled, uh, but a nine.
on this one. Tran, position, have you, you given this record a listen? listen? Did you love, love it? it? Did, you, did hate you hate it? it? What, what would you rate it? it? You're, You're the best of the best. What should I review, I review next? next? Hit, hit the like, like if you like, like please subscribe, subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up for the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Quedeca, forever. This is sick. This is a big moment. For all the YouTube rappers out there, this is what I this is what, who I do it for. Yeah, and light a light nine on the Lucy's. You know what I'm talking about? I know people hate Fantana or whatever, and you know I guess people will hate somebody who reviews everything and doesn't like certain things. Just this as a moment is crazy because whether you like it or not, he does have a lot of ethos in music, and I've been a fan of him since I was 15 or 14 when he was reviewing Hobson and I was like, how the fuck did you give Hobson a three? This is the goat. Yeah, thank you so much for this review. And I, you know, it's not like you were trying to do me a favor by giving it a nine. I'm assuming that this is a genuine review. So more so that I'm just flattered and happy that you like it. And now there's gonna be people that check out the album and that because they're like, hey, you know, he gave it that crazy score. Maybe I'll give it a listen. Maybe they'll go into it with the idea of, of oh, this is good. They'll be more likely to, to have it click for them. And that's, I think, an important thing. You gotta read the comments. Nine out of 10 for Quedeca feels like something I would have made a goofy comment about a few years back. Perhaps if this album was called From Melon to You, he would have given it a nine out of 10. Now it's all real. Quad did. <laughs> Dude, a nine. This is lit. It's a great moment for the community. Anthony, thank you so much. You know, I'm a long-term Fantano head. It can't be overstated how much I appreciate it. And beyond Fantano, thank you to all of the people that have been rocking with me or people that are new that are starting to appreciate it too. I don't even deserve that shit. I'm just trying to make good songs. And so the fact that people fuck with it, especially when they're weird, is just very surreal. So again, thank you so much. Y'all are the goats. Stay tuned, Vanisher, the next album. I, I hope we've established a relationship here where you know, you know what's happening. You know what's coming. I'm not gonna drop it unless it does the thing. This is sick though. This is sick. Maybe this is a big moment or, you know, maybe it's all, it's all just a dream. Oh, fuck.